and it's so so honest and I'm sort of vulnerable and you as a person the little I know you are are not quite as candid and you're very funny and you're very wry and very sardonic and very quick do you find it somehow safer to sing the deeper emotions uh, well you kind of hit the nail on the head probably um, well, it's not the necessarily I mean I think uh, certainly earlier in life um, that was the only way I could you know, basically communicate those emotions because when you're young, young, your parents don't listen or yours may have done, mine didn't. But that was that was me. I mean, I used to sing to get those emotions out. And so consequently, I, songwriting to me is, is it's always when I'm feeling I, I need to get something out of my system and normally when, if I'm happy or cracking a joke or whatever, um, I'm not in a songwriting mood. That's not when I write songs. I do it when it's something kind of serious normally. So... I mean, most people who meet me after listening to, you know, music I've done on my own or music with tears, actually I'm not the image they have of who they should be meeting. There should be some, like, dark shoegazing guy, which actually when I was younger I probably was, but uh, not so much anymore. I mean, it, I, it makes sense to me. It makes perfect sense. I mean, you're, there are many facets to a Kurt Smith, and I'm sure there are many more that I don't see. Where do you compose those beautiful melodies? Do you sit on piano to do that? Um, it's always dependent, you know. I mean, I think that um, I mean, I, I, the rule of thumb is normally it's normally myself and Charlton together, and uh, it's it's um, it's the standard. You strum a chord, I'll sing a melody, kind of thing. But it, I mean, it comes, but there there is. I mean, as you know, there's no set rules. You 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 do it. It can be sitting at a piano. It can be. I mean, a few things have been at a piano at home. Some things may have just been on an acoustic guitar. I have an idea for a chorus, and I'm like. I, you know me, I can't finish a song, so could you help me? Um, so it, it sort of depends. Yeah, it's really nice. The, in, the way that your voice kind of soars was also, it's a small space. I know that it looks huge here on The Furious World, but it's, wow, it was kind of surprising. It's a, you, don't have, you don't have those back things that you had before. That time I watched your show and I said it looked like you were sitting in this gigantic kind of studio, like you were in The Tonight Show or something. That's the green screen. We opted not to use the green. I don't know why. I didn't, the green screen was making me sick after a while. It's a joke because obviously it's a green screen and my arm goes off and stuff. But I just, I tired of the joke. Now let's, now let's get serious if we can. I typically have all sorts of questions that I want to ask you, but I leave the best questions for the wisest, always the smartest guy in the room. And I, I have to say, we have some bright people here, but none brighter than my tortoise, King Ferdinand. I will, I will utilize this box uh, only if there's a, a soiling issue. I constantly talk about this. The urine is completely sterile, so don't worry about that. It's it's the other thing that's... Not, he doesn't bite. He's completely herbivorous. Stroke him under the neck like that. He's, he likes you, too. He doesn't typically... And he's getting bigger. My, it's, he's getting heavier and heavier. All right. First question, King Ferdinand. I know that you're anxious. He is wild about your stuff. Hey, he really is. Yeah, and he'll start going. King Ferdinand, let's, what do you have to say? Kurt, I just want to say how happy and proud I am that you were able to come by the show this evening. I, I do not say this unless I mean it, so here goes. I am a huge fan. Really, I am. Who knew he was that race? You know, but it's just such a deep, booming voice. It's, I don't know if it's racial. He definitely was. He was born in, in this, in this, he's a South Saharan tortoise. Saharan. Okay. Saharan, I yeah. so. Saharan. Saharan, that's what I said. Saharan. You say Saharan. Saharan, <laughs> Right. So anyway, King Ferdinand, what you, what's the first question for Kurt? Now I'm wondering if you had any opinion as to whether there was a difference between what? English songwriters wait, 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 and American... Yeah, I, can't, I can't hear that. I, do it. I don't know what happened. Like, we couldn't hear it. Can you play that? I mean, can you, can, can you say that again where we can hear it? God damn it. I can't. How can we hear now I'm wondering one more time, if you had can, any can you say opinion again, as to whether there was a difference between English songwriters and American songwriters. I think he asked what's the difference between... I, heard that. Yeah. I actually do speak turtle. Um, you know, generally the English ones tend to be born in England, more than the American ones, uh, per se, really. And, and the king will comment... 
Hmm. Very, very interesting. Now, on the personal front, I, I, I wanted to know if your music has changed at all since becoming a father. It's become... I keep wanting to say turtle. 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 <laughs> turtle. Turtle. Um, have, you ever watched, have you ever watched that movie? It's the worst movie ever made. What's it called? Master Masters of Disguise. Disguise. Masters of Disguise. I haven't seen it. <laughs> well, he, he actually is dressed as a turtle in one point. Dana Carvey. The, the Dana Carvey. It's a Dana Carvey oh, movie. Okay. Possibly the worst movie you'll ever see in your life. But um, for some reason, my, my partner in tears, Roland, loved the movie. I, I don't know why, but it's actually funnier when he does the impersonations. But I can't look at the turtle without seeing Roland going... Turtle, turtle. <laughs> turtle, get a close up here, because he's doing it, yes. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> I, I can only speak, he doesn't usually want to say twice, it's in his contract. Has your music, ch I think, oh, change since you've been... Um, yeah, I, w I would think so. I mean, you know, obviously I sing probably a bit more about my kids, but, um, and, and I think music becomes a little less precious. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure you know, as a father, you tend to, when, when children come along, um, you have something that's actually more important than music. Right. It's like a dog, people that have a, a dog and, you know, like they take care of the dog. Mark, your dog, your dog was the most depressed thing. You got like a gallbladder in fact, after that baby came around, that dog was done. It must have just... Yeah, our cat disappeared afterwards. We didn't, we didn't have a cat after that. But, um, and we got the dog after the kids now that we have a dog. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's just that um, you become more relaxed when, when you're in a studio because work becomes something that you actually you take more pleasure in as opposed to kind of tear your hair out about, which I used to more. It's not self-definitional in some way. You already have, you're defined... Yes. Well, there's a bit of flagellation here. The guy's got a freaking turtle in the... Now, what was... Turtle, do you have a response to that, King Ferdinand? <laughs> Beautifully put. Beautifully put. <laughs> Kurt, could you contrast the music business today and the music business when Tears for Fear started? I believe it was back in uh, 1981. Well, I think the biggest difference was, you know, back then I was... I think, I mean, I think I can say this in all safety, never interviewed by a turtle. Um, although, you know, with the drugs I was taking back then, who knows? Who knows? It could have been. could have looked like a turtle to me. Um, Edward, well, I mean, there's a huge difference, obviously. Um, you know, back then, you, there was... Uh, there was only one kind of route you could take to actually get anywhere in the music industry, which involved, you know, trying to get someone to give you the money to make a record, which making a record costed a fortune. You had to go in a big, gigantic studio with these humongous desks, and you can do all that on your laptop now, far better than you could on that equipment. Right. Um, then you needed a record company, and you needed money behind that, and you needed to get radio play, and this was all before the internet, and the internet came along and changed everything, because who cares about radio play, who cares about record companies, but now it's a different set of problems, which is how do you get yourself heard through all, all the noise there, which, because everyone's doing it now. So it's, um, it's now a, a war of attrition more than anything else, I feel. Interesting. 